a little bit low in uh, energy here today, okay? And I am in the same boat as you. So we're going to need to work as a team here, okay? All right? I'm going to need your energy, and you're probably going to need mine. And if we put it together, maybe we can up it up, you know, a little bit of a notch up there, okay? So, but uh, it's great to be with you this morning. And, uh, you know, as a region, we've been memorizing the book of Mark. So we're in chapter 1. And I've asked Raven and Eric to come and do some memory verses for us, okay? And so that's, that's why they're up here. They're true champions, not afraid to step out. And uh, I, hope, I can't wait to see you guys up here Wednesdays and Sundays, amen? So you, are you guys ready? Yes. Did you guys decide who's going first? He just told me. Oh, ladies first, right? <laughs> this is what it's convenient to have ladies first. <laughs> Josh said we're not afraid, but like I'm up here and my, my heart is pounding and stuff. It's so different on this side of the pulpit. <laughs> All right. Um, so in the beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, son of God, as it is written in Isaiah, the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you to prepare your way. A voice, one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way, wait, 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 prepare the way for your Lord and make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist was in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for forgiveness of sins. Um, I got this, y'all. Uh, I, I had it in my bathroom. Um, okay. Preaching a baptism of forgiveness. Oh, okay, there. Um, the whole Judean countryside and all of Jerusalem went out to him, um, confessing their sins, and they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt at his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And his message was this. After me comes the one more powerful than I, uh, whose sand straps, wait, straps of sandals. <laughs> Sandals or straps, one of those. Um, I am not worthy enough to bend down and untie. I baptize with holy with with water, but he will baptize with the Holy Spirit. At this time, Jesus um, came from Nazareth in Galilee uh, and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Uh, as he came out of the water, the heavens tore open, and a spirit descended upon him like that of a dove. A voice called from heaven, "This is my son." whom I love and with whom I'm well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him to the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness wilderness 40 days being tempted by Satan. Um, being tempted by Satan. Uh, and he was, he was with the wild animals, and the angels attended him. Uh, I still have more. Um, oh, after John was put, in, um, was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, uh, to proclaim the good news. The time is now, the king, he said, the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe um, in the good news. Um, as he was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting nets, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, he said, uh, and I will send you out to fish for men. Um, at once they dropped their nets and followed him. Um, he went a little further and saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John um, preparing to cast out nets. Uh, without delay, without delay, he told them to come follow him. That is not what it says, but it's close. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's the MSG version, y'all. Um, uh, Okay, so he said, without delay, he said, come follow me. Um, they dropped their nets and left their father Zebedee in the boats with, 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 the, with the hired men and followed him. Um, they went to Capernaum. Uh, <laughs> I'm almost done. <laughs> they went to Capernaum. Um, and after Sabbath, Jesus uh, began teaching in the synagogues. Uh, the, pe the people were amazed at his teachings um, as he taught 
as one with authority um, and not as the, te as the teachers of the law. Woo! <laughs> I should have gone first. That was like the four course meal. I'm just going to give you the appetizer. The beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way as a voice of one calling in the desert. Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist came to the desert region, preaching a baptism for forgiveness, for repentance, and for forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to see him. John wore clothes of camel hair and with a leather belt around his waist. He ate wild locusts and honey, and this was his message. After me, one more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am unworthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Cool. You know, I, I, it is a lot harder up here, isn't it? Right? You can do great in your bathroom, not behind the pulpit, okay? It's just a different animal, right? So, great job. And, you know, Raven only knew two verses on Wednesday. She got the verse 22 today. That's a lot of verses in a few days. I'm sure she took off of work. I'm not saying do that. <laughs> so, um, but here's our, um, do we have a, is that how it's going to be? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I didn't know if we were going to have a different start type of uh, PowerPoint slide. That's new. Hey, hey, that's what we got. <laughs> so, um, when I want to talk, you know, Christmas, I talked about the tale of two kings, right? And then last regional service, we spoke about uh, how much and how well Jesus knew his word, right? We talked about illusion and being lewd, a hint, you know, it gives just a hint of something, either by action or by words, a hint of something that was supposed to go back into the New Testament and understand what this means. And I just got to say, if you really don't get it, it's okay. You know, you'll be just fine if you don't understand the hints or the illusions, right? You're still going to go to heaven, just like anyone else who would understand it, okay? Uh, you're not, we're not more or less spiritual because we get that stuff, right? It was just an understanding of how some of these scriptural things are approached. Uh, but today I want to talk about the rabbi and his Talmudim. And I'm, I'm aware of the simplicity of this message. In its, in its delivery, in its concept, it's very simple. Uh, but applied properly, it's world changing. So the real challenge of this is not understanding what I'm about to say. In fact, for most of us, this is nothing more than a reminder. I, hope, I, hope, I hate to disappoint you if you thought you were going to come and find some great new stuff today. I'm actually going to just go back to the simple truths. Um, but like I say, if we put this into practice, the way it was taught, this changes the world. And so, with that, I'm just kind of, that was sort of my introduction, right? I'm just going to pray, and we're going to dive on in. Amen? Father, I just want to thank you, God, and bless you because of your great grace in our life. I thank you for your word, and just to hear it flow through the hearts and minds of uh, Raven and Eric, it's just powerful, God, because it's on our hearts. And it, we know it, we say it, we live it, 
And then we get to watch how you work through it. Lord, I'm so grateful for what you're doing in our fellowship. How you are molding us, transforming us, impacting our lives, impacting the community around us. And we're so grateful that, that you chose us. Because there's nothing special about any one of us in this room. Our mamas might have thought we were special. But you think we're special. But honestly, we're just average, ordinary people. And that's okay. Because you take the ordinary and you make it extraordinary. And so, right now, I just lift this time up to you. Guide us with your good spirit. And may our hearts be prepared and ready to be like our Messiah. In his great name we pray. Amen. 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 I want to open it up. If you could try it to this quote from Gandhi. Mm. <clears throat> All right? I like you, Christian. I like you, Christ. You do not like you, Christian. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. Now, in reading that, you may have multiple feelings towards it. I know I did, right? I, I did because, in one sense, you can see his point, but it's such a broad statement. It it does not speak for everyone, right? right? But truth of the matter is, we can say this of any belief system. There's not a belief system that this excuses. There are just certain people who are a great example of things and certain people who are just not. There's a certain group of people that are a great example and there's a certain people, a group of people that are just not. And unfortunately, I don't know when he made this quote, I don't know if he did it when he was in South Africa or when he did it when he was in India, but his experience with Christianity wasn't too positive. Right? And so, this is born. The only thing I find at peace with this statement is that he liked our Christ. Right? The thing that is disturbing to me is that what he read about, in, about our Christ, he wasn't seen in his Christians. And that is the problem. Because in the end, what message spoke louder? was the example that was left behind. Yeah. Now, I know he read the New Testament, and in fact, it was his peaceful resistance he got from Jesus. And so, it inspired him to turn the other cheek and not respond with hate or anger or violence. And so, I know he was influenced by Christ, but yet there was this one little stumble block, perhaps, when him making it all the way to making Christ his Lord. And maybe not, but this statement does speak volumes of what he was seeing in Christ-like followers. And so, I want to look at a Talmudim and what that is. See, Christ would have called his followers Talmudines. Go make disciples. Go make Talmudines. Okay? Talmud is the individual. Talmudines are disciples. Collectively, we're Talmudines. If you're a follower of Christ, you're a Talmudine. If you individually are a Talmud. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ. Right? Now, the definition would be follow the example of the teacher or mimic the teacher, right? Now, we know it as a disciple, as a student, right? And that's not true. I mean, that's not untrue. It, it does mean that. But it's just not a complete sentence. It does not describe it correctly. It, it's, it's not complete. Right? Because it's more than just a student. Because when you think of students, you think of you come into a classroom and you're going to learn something, right? And you learn, when you go to a classroom, you learn so that you can what? Teach or apply or well, think about when you're in school. Take right? a test. Take a test. <laughs> right? You just want to pass that test. Yeah, and then after that test is taken, let's be honest. Right? So there's a little bit of problem with that definition because
Because you're going to learn it just so you can regurgitate it. But it's, it's more than an intellectual understanding. A Talmudian, a disciple, is one who wants to, more than anything else in this world, is to think and act just like their teacher. It is their greatest desire, it's their passion, that they wake up in the morning wanting to do, and what they go to bed thinking about. And that is not an exaggeration. They want to be and think just like their teacher. How does he treat his children? How does he treat his spouse? Okay? How does he treat his enemy? How does he respond to his enemy? How, what prayers does he use when he eats? What does he say when he does eat? I mean, every little thing they are observing and watching. And I'm not making this up. They are so serious about following and being like their teacher. They go to him everywhere he goes. Everywhere. Okay? Is there a blessing? After the bathroom. <laughs> there is. Wow. That sounds gross, but that's how devoted they are. They say, I'm going to beat your town dean. They are absolutely devoted to being like that person. It says this, quote, As the rabbi lived and taught his understanding of the scripture, his Talmud listened to him, watched him, followed him, memorized his words. This is why I'm asking us to memorize the Gospels. Because if Jesus is our teacher, our Lord, our Rabbi, whatever term you want to put on there, right? Our Messiah, our Christ. We must know His teachings yeah. above all else. It sets precedence over everything else you have in your life. <coughs> if we are truly a Talmudian, that's what we desire. And imitate His walk with God. And I got this from a series called In the Dust of His Rabbi. And they want to walk so close to this rabbi that when he walks, the dust kicks up on him. Wow. And when they went into something, the dirtier they were, the more they felt that they were like their rabbi. And so they want to kick with the dust of the rabbi. They want to get dirty from the rabbi's feet. Right? That's how close they wanted to be to him. Now here's the rabbi. This is Jesus. Now Jesus says, very truly I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what? What he sees his father doing. Because whatever the father does, the son also does. So Jesus is modeling the example he wishes for us to follow. So, if God did this, Jesus did this. And if God did this, Jesus did this. And if God said this, Jesus said this. You want to know what God is? Who he is? What's he like? What he doesn't like? All you have to do is follow his son Jesus, who did exactly what his father did. It says... The world must learn that I love the Father and that I do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Exactly. Listen to that word. That there's no distinction between the two. You're seeing God when you look at Jesus. He's imitating Him perfectly. And that's why it says, the Son reflects the glory of God. And shows exactly what God is like. You know, you get people out there and they say, you can never really know God. And we say, oh yes you can. You just got to look at his son. Yeah. And this is a good mimic. This is a good invitation, right? Amen. So sometimes I see things in my kids and I go, oh I know where they're getting that from. <laughs> I don't like it. 
because it reminds me a lot of me. Right? And that's not the good stuff, right? And then you see the good stuff and you go, okay, I got something's all right, right? But they're mimicking us, they're watching us, especially when they're young. Right now, I'm starting to end the superhero phase. I was the superhero. I could beat anything. I'm smarter than anything else, right? That is over. Okay? Now they see all my junk, and that's all they see. Okay? Eventually, they'll come back around right here. I look forward to that day. <laughs> so, but the mimic, the world is going to mimic, right? Jesus is up there. He's mimicking his, his father, right? He's showing us what it is. Our kids show us who we are in our own home. They mimic us. And that's okay. Because it's discipling one-on-one. -on -one. The first people to disciple you is you're going to be your kids. Right? So, this is the example he sets. He sets and goes, there's no distinction between the two of us. My God and me, our Father and me, are one. Eventually, the Talmud became a teacher who had his own disciples who wanted to learn from him how to walk with God. And so, the rabbi will teach them what he has learned in his walk. And that's what Jesus is doing. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business, right? What his master is doing. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from the Father, I have made known to you. Everything that God has taught Jesus, we know. It's there. We can look, we can read it, we can see it. It's tangible. It's not far off, it's not far fetched. It's right here with us. And so he begins to teach us. But then, what about the Kamadim? See, we got one, we got God's like this, Jesus is like this. So now what the Kamadim has to be like? Jesus. Right? And that's what you get with Paul. Paul's a great example of this. You know, I gotta say something, guys. Um, I just got progressive lenses, so if I'm like this, I don't know how to look through these things yet, man. Some of you are blurry, some of you are okay, some of you I see clearly. But, uh, so I'm trying to read this. <laughs> I try to read this, and I'm like, oh man, I don't know what that's up. I just got a Friday afternoon, so. I want to know Christ, he says. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection. And participate, listen to these words, and participate, not in His glory, but in His suffering, wow. yep. becoming like Him in His death. Yeah. This is the attitude and the mindset of a Talmud. I want to be just like my teacher. Yeah. And if He suffered, so do I. You know, all but John, and it wasn't for lack of trying, died a martyr death. All Jesus' disciples were martyred for their faith. That's intense. Yeah. And here you have Paul this attitude, and then he writes, be imitators of me. <laughs> well, that's exciting. <laughs> I want to be like him. I want to die like him. I want to suffer like him. Now be like me. That's a lot. Let's just be honest. When I read, you know, he talked about the community in CISO. I go, man, that doesn't really, that doesn't really fire me up. <laughs> right? But they understood. They want to be like them, like Jesus, so much that if it meant going to the cross so that the world can see him, it's worth it. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. So you've got God, you've got Jesus, you've got Paul.
But Paul had his own disciples because he said, go make disciples, go make Talmuds, go make Talmudines, right? He said, go out there, right? And so Paul had his Timothy. And he was a, a follower or a Talmud. Yes, he was a, a, a disciple of Jesus, but he was a disciple of Paul. And he says, for this reason I have sent you Timothy, my son whom I love, who is faithful in the Lord. What's he say? He reminded you of my ways. He remind you of my ways of, and life in Christ. They were so serious about being just like their Lord. They imitated to a team. That Paul had enough confidence to say, hey, I'm sending you this guy. He will remind you exactly who I am. And because of that, you will know who Christ is. This was the attitude that changed the world. Yeah. Imitators. When I was young in the faith, we talked a lot about this in San Diego. Who are you imitating? Mm -hmm. Whose faith are you imitating? Who are you being like? And I remember when somebody one day said, you know, you're just like Gary. In a good way, okay? <laughs> you could be like Gary in a bad way, I'm sure, but it was, hey, you're just like Gary. And I remember feeling so like, Yes. That's what I was shooting for. I was trying to learn to be humble like him. I was trying to read my Bible like him and pray like him and how he discipled and how he studied the Bible. And I just watched and observed. And I'd go and I'd be with him. I'd babysit his kids so I could spend time with him. And then we'd go share our faith together. And I'd be like, how does he share his faith? How does he respond? And I would just watch and I would learn and grow. And, man, that was... The fastest I grew in that short period of time because I had this model to look at. <coughs> he was so humble. He never discipled anyone without opening up the scripture first and leading it to him. <clears throat> he prayed like a warrior. He consistently did the things of Christ whether the results were there or not. I just remember saying, this man is the hardest working man I know in the faith. I'm going to be just like him. He became the best man at my wedding. Wow. Right? And I just got his number again. <laughs> I called him up and some lady called, yelled at me. I wish you people would stop calling me this number. Oh man, I didn't know he changed his number. <laughs> she was mad. She left me a great message. Um, <laughs> But think about this compared to what we read. To think like and act like your wow. teacher. Come on. To think and act like. And yet, here we are. And this man who led a movement, created a, a country, looks at his disciples and says, I don't like your followers. But I do like your Christ. I know this is such a great challenge. Like I said, this is such a simple message. You've got the message already. I need to be like Jesus. Right? <laughs> if that's all I had said in the beginning, that would have been enough. But you see, our Lord modeled it. The apostles modeled it. Their disciples modeled it. The world was changed and transformed. They'll never be the same. But somehow, somewhere, it, the cracks happen. And we got this. And I tell you what, millions around the world would probably quote that today. Yeah. In our own country. Yeah. Perhaps even in our own state. Yeah. <coughs> and that's what's missing is that we're not learning to think and act just like the rabbi. So if you, I got three deep Rapid points. That was only an introduction. Just kidding. Actually, this is the conclusion. <laughs> As we're concluding here, I want you to think about it. This is what's going to be asked. These aren't unique. You've all heard these before, right? They're asked to know their text. Why do you need to know your text? Because they're God's words. Everything I have received or been taught by the Father, I have made known to you. Okay? 
So we know the, the, the mind of the Lord because He given His given us His word. Right? That all Talmudines are apt to be part of a community of other Talmudines. They have to be part of a community of disciples. And I want to encourage you, and I've said this before, but if you really want to grow in your faith, you got to get people around you who are serious about their walk with God. That's what it takes. And you need to learn from them. You need to pray with them. You got to learn scriptures together. And you got to disciple one another and encourage one another. And sometimes you're going to have to spur one another on, right? But if you're serious, you live your lives with, surrounded by these type of people. And then all Talmudines, with no exception, will be asked to go make other Talmudines. That is just what you have to do. And so, we know this is being devoted to the apostles' teachings, right? To the fellowship, right? Breaking the bread, prayer. We know this as going and making disciples. Nothing new, I told you. It's not new. It's just a reminder in this context that we're called to be just like our teacher. Nothing yeah. more, nothing less. I think this scripture is great. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. He said, greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for his friends. That's how committed they are to each other. That's how committed they are to the fellowship. You read Romans 12. He tells us that we are no longer our own, but we belong to each other. We are owned by each other. That's an interesting thought there. But when you love each other so much that you're willing to lay down your life for each other, we take ownership of one another. You are my friends if you do what I command. Implying if you don't do what he commands, you're not his friend. I know they won't call you servants because servants does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I have learned from my father I have made known to you. This is the context of everything I've been saying. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Other Talmudines. Fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. And so I just want us to think about, as we live in the world that we do, these final scriptures. That's it. Live such good lives. Whether you're in the land of the Hindus, or the Muslims, or the atheists, or the Christians, it doesn't matter. Live such lives among the pagans. That though they accuse you of doing wrong, which they will, they may see your good deeds, right, being just like Christ, and glorify God on the day when, when he comes back. They might not get it during this lifetime. But when they stand before God on that day of judgment, your face is what they'll see. It's your face that they'll remember. I remember how I was supposed to live because of my friend, my neighbor, my coworker, the disciple of Jesus Christ, the one who lived just like him. And they will glorify God because of you. Amen. That's it. Amen.